Hi, I'm Chad with Move for Guitar. This lesson is from our series, Music Theory for Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to take a major seven chord shape and just by moving one note at a time, turn it into a dominant seven, then a minor seven, then a minor seven flat five, and then a diminished seven. First off, if you like the diagrams for everything in this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide, Music Theory for Guitar. And this e-guide will be something that you can study and use as a reference for years to come. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to just go download it. But I am working on it as I'm filming this lesson, so if it's available, a link will pop up on the screen that will allow you to download it. If no link appears, you can look in the description and it will say whether it's available or coming soon. And if it's not available yet, you can sign up for our mailing list and we'll send you a copy as soon as it is available. Also, if you're signed up for our mailing list, you'll receive all updated versions as well. But don't worry, you don't need the e-guide to follow along with this lesson because all of the charts will be on the screen. And also be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day. This is part 3.7 from our series, Music Theory for Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So this lesson might be covering something that you already understand, but I think it's important to be able to visualize it on the fretboard and really cement it into your mind because it's an important concept. And like I said, we're going to take a major seventh chord and just by moving one note at a time, turn it into all the other seventh chords that we've been talking about in this series. And I'm going to start with drop two and drop three chords since those are probably the most common and useful way to play seventh chords. So this first one we're going to start with is a drop two major seven in root position. And we're not worried about what key this is in. We're just looking at the shape for now and the intervals in the shape. And obviously this is on the sixth, fifth, fourth, and third strings. So as you know, a major seventh chord is a root, major third, perfect fifth, major seventh. So the next chord we're going to go to is a dominant seventh chord. So the one note we have to move to get to a dominant seventh chord is the major seventh. We move this down half a step because the only difference between a major seven chord and a dominant seven chord is that a major seven has a major seventh interval in it and a dominant seven has a minor seventh interval in it. So if we move that seventh down half a step, this is our new shape. Now we have a drop two dominant seventh chord in root position. The next chord we're going to get to by moving one note is the minor seventh. So to get to a minor seventh, we just have to move the major third down half a step to a minor third. Because the only difference between a dominant seventh chord and a minor seventh chord is that a minor seventh chord has a minor third in it and a dominant seventh chord has a major third in it. So if we move that note down half a step, we end up with a drop two minor seventh chord in root position. So the next chord we're going to get to by moving one note is a minor seven flat five. And I'm sure you know that you move the fifth to get to the minor seven flat five because you need to move this perfect fifth down half a step to a flat five or a diminished fifth because the only difference between a minor seven chord and a minor seven flat five chord is that a minor seven chord has a perfect fifth and a minor seven flat five has a diminished fifth. So if we move that down, this is your new shape and that gives you a drop two minor seven flat five in root position. And then the last chord we're going to get to is the last chord we've been talking about, the last seventh chord, which is a diminished seventh chord. So to get to that diminished seventh chord by moving one note, we're going to take this flat seven, move it down half a step to give us a double flat seven. Because the only difference between a minor seven flat five and a diminished seventh chord is that a minor seven flat five has a flat seven or minor seventh in it and a diminished seventh has a double flat seven or a diminished seventh in it. So if we move that down half a step, we get a drop two diminished seventh chord in root position. So that was drop two chords. We could also look at drop three chords. So this is a drop three major seventh in root position starting on the sixth string. And to get to all the other seventh chords just by moving one note at a time, it's the exact same process. So to get from a major seventh to a dominant seventh, you move the seven down half a step to the minor seventh. So that's your drop three dominant seventh in root position. To go from dominant seventh to minor seventh, you move the 
major third down to a minor third, and that gives you a drop three minor seven in root position. To get to a minor seven flat five by moving one note, you're going to move the five down half a step to a flat five or a diminished fifth. That gives you a drop three minor seven flat five in root position. And then the last one to get to a diminished seventh, you're going to move the flat seven down half a step to get to a double flat seven or a diminished seventh. And that becomes a drop three diminished seventh chord in root position. And this would work for any inversion as well. I just showed you in root position, but if we were to look at a major seven drop three chord in first inversion, the exact same thing applies. To get to a dominant seventh chord, we just find where the seven is because we have to move that down half a step to get to a flat seven. And it's right there in this voicing. So we move that down. Now we have a drop three dominant seven in first inversion. Then to get to a minor seven chord, you're going to find the major third, move that down half a step to a flat three or a minor third, and that gives you a drop three minor seven in first inversion. To get to a minor seven flat five, you're going to find the fifth, move that down half a step to give you a flat five or diminished fifth, that gives you a drop three minor seven flat five in first inversion, and then to get to the last one, you're going to find the flat seven. Move that down half a step to a double flat seven or diminished seventh, and that'll give you drop three diminished seven in first inversion. And this would work on any set of strings as well. I just showed you starting on the sixth string, but it would work through all the string sets. You just have to know where your third, your fifth, and your seventh are to be able to move those one at a time to get to all the other seventh chords. And then one last thing I want to point out in this lesson that I think is important to be able to visualize is how to go from a drop two chord to a drop three chord or vice versa. So we're just going to look at a major seventh because this concept works with all the other seventh chords. And we're in drop two right now. We're looking at a drop two major seventh chord in root position. To turn this into a drop three chord, all you have to do is take the second to lowest note and move it to your highest note. So you take the second to lowest note and move it up an octave to here. And that would give you your drop three major seventh chord in root position. Or if you wanted to go from your drop three to your drop two, you just do the opposite. You take your highest note and move it down an octave and it becomes your second to lowest note. And then you have a drop two chord. So that's the only difference between drop two and drop three. With drop two, like I said, you're not skipping any th strings. With the chord voicings for the drop three that I showed you, you're skipping one string each time. So if you're learning these, you could just start with a drop two or a drop three, learn them really well, and then if you want to go from a drop three or a drop two or vice, whichever one you want to start with, that's how you can go back and forth between them. So that's just another thing to be aware of. It'll help you visualize these chords and probably help you memorize them quicker. And I just wanted to point that out in this lesson. So hopefully that helps you visualize the relationship between all the seventh chords on your fretboard. Again, all the diagrams are in your e-guide, so download that and you can refer to it anytime you need to. Go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm going to show you how all the seventh chords we've been talking about are diatonic to the major scale. All the seventh chords except the diminished seventh. And again, download the e-guide. You'll be able to use that as a reference for years to come. And be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.